together. Today, I appreciate all the blessings in my life. I focus my attention on what I want to experience. I release anything which no longer serves my highest good. I appreciate who I am and the life I am creating. Today, I appreciate all the blessings in my life. And so I now humbly turn this over to our wonderful guest today. Ah. Well, good morning. You guys got a lot of good mornings this morning. <laughs> so we or reside, our, our house, I will say, is in Annapolis, outside of Annapolis, Maryland. So we, we did get a yay. <laughs> we, uh, we made our way on Thursday-ish to Myrtle Beach, and we were in Myrtle Beach on Friday and s yesterday for some events. And uh, with you, beloveds, today, so thank you for having us. It has been a, a little while in the making, so it feels good to be here. Y'all are beautiful and welcoming, and, and we definitely thank you for that. Um, so when we were planning all this, the topic that was suggested was what we appreciate appreciates. And I know you guys kicked off your pledge drive on Friday, yes? yes. Yes, with gusto and momentum. And I know that's going on throughout this month. So my personal humble opinion is that the flow of money, that money exchange, that financial exchange, that we as humans created and we continue to support in very odd and strange ways, <clears throat> That flow begins when we are able to appreciate more and more everything, every thing that happens around us, to us, through us, as us. Every thing. Yeah. So today, to, to kick off the month of this um, all-important pledge to continue to do the work and the service that you as a community provide to this world, we're going to talk about appreciating everything to allow that financial then to flow. That means everything. <laughs> So I wrote this song around this idea that, that, I don't know, I think it was Einstein who said that you, either, you can either see the world as a friendly universe or as a hostile universe. Was it Einstein? And um, he's usually responsible for most of the wisdom that I, that I follow. Um, and um, so I thought, well, things don't really happen to you like they happen for you because everything's if everything's in in your favor then it's all happening for you and um so i wrote this song i actually made a a blog once around this song we do sometimes we do a song blog we call it so we we put the song out there and we tell the story behind it and this magazine picked it up because they love the title it said how to go from pissed to blissed <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Jaw tight, teeth clenched, soul not right, and eyes wide, heart pounds quick, breaths are the only sound in gut, check, suspect, train wreck is up in view, and this thing, this pain, is gonna have it talking to you, sleeping might be the proper thing to do, but suddenly you're covered up with the sweet Sigh on your chest in the summer moon Late June, tired time with 
told the truth and words to come worse than tears drop and angels caught in life times of memories rushing 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 at you and running might be the proper thing to do but heaven is forming all around you well this isn't fair and this isn't right this can't be happening to me tonight well it isn't my friend no no it's happening for you bombard us with distractions, simple distractions that take us away from what we believe we want to be experiencing in a moment. Yet once we get through those moments, how often do we say, boy, I wouldn't have wished that on anyone, but I wouldn't have changed it for the world. Why? Because we can then see the gifts that that challenge, that milestone, that experience that may in the moment have had us a bit frazzled. We can then see the gifts that it brought to us. So the question is, when do we appreciate? How about now? And, and now, right now, what, whatever the present moment offers, there is always a chance for us to show gratitude and appreciation. Whatever the moment, the present moment offers. In each moment, we have to determine if the opportunity presenting is the one that we choose to appreciate, or one that we choose not to appreciate. It is our choice. The energy of that decision then follows in our words, in our gestures, in our actions, in our behaviors. So the return on the investment of that moment will mirror the level of appreciation that we brought to it. What we appreciate 
appreciates. What we appreciate doesn't appreciate in random fashion. What we appreciate appreciates at the level of intensity of all of the appreciations from yourself and others that somehow magically created the present moment that you are experiencing right now. Plus, how we choose to appreciate that present moment. So everything that led up to that, plus what we add to it, that level of appreciation matters. It's everything. Eric Butterworth in Spiritual Economics describes two types of people. He describes givers and takers. So I want to read this excerpt. The takers are people who believe that their lives will always be the total of what they can get from the world. They are always thinking get, get, get. They plan and scheme ways to get what they want in money, in love, in happiness, and in all kinds of good. No matter that they are, may be applying metaphysical techniques, they still may very well be takers. But whatever may be their spiritual ideals or lack of any, no matter what they take, they can never know peace or security or fulfillment. The givers, on the other hand, are convinced that life is a giving process. Thus, their subtle motivation in all their ways is to give themselves away in love, in service, and in all the many helpful ways they can invest themselves. They are always secure, for they intuitively know that their good flows from within. Where does appreciation come from? So the question is, would you consider yourself a giver? And if so, do you consciously appreciate every present moment opportunity that presents itself? Are you able to appreciate it for all that it is? And then move on and be gracious in the next moment for all that it is and has the potential to be. <coughs> Sometimes we wallow in what we can't appreciate from that moment, and we drag that wallowing into this present moment. And this present moment doesn't have anything to do with that. What we appreciate defines our core values. What we appreciate is an expression of our beliefs. What we appreciate is one of the tools that we have to grow and to support others' growth around us. The spiritual practice is to shorten the length of time it takes us to find, to feel, and to express our appreciation. Regardless of how we see it with our two human eyes. Shorten the length of time it takes us to find, feel, and express our appreciation. So, I would love to invite you into a meditation And as you get comfortable, uncrossed, and get in touch with your breath, allow the inhale to cleanse your spirit. Out. 
Be present in this moment. And I invite you into your heart space and find that seed of appreciation that is always planted within your heart. And as you allow that to envelop your heart and expand and radiate through your entire physical body and feel yourself sitting in appreciation. And I invite you to bring into your consciousness a short life review. Those potential challenges, those potential roadblocks, those potential hurts, that have all created the you that sits here today in appreciation for everything that came to you in each of those moments. <coughs> and I invite you to identify any place that might be sitting outside of that chair of appreciation and to bring it into your heart fully and see the gifts, see the impact, see the beauty. Mind that you took 
yourself plant another seed of appreciation in your heart and allow those two seeds to integrate and grow together to strengthen the level of intensity of the appreciation that you can share As you begin to come back into the room, feeling the chair under you, getting back in touch with your breath, wiggling those fingers and those toes and eventually opening your eyes. able to see a different perspective 
a different intensity of appreciation for whatever might have popped up in your mind. And what pops up today will be different than what pops up tomorrow. So that's a practice that we can choose to practice over and over and over again as we humans relive some past experiences. So to sum all of this up, there is a story by Don Miguel Ruiz called The Master. And it was, it is from The Mastery of Love. And I just felt like I needed to share this to, to wrap up this concept of what we appreciate appreciates. Once upon a time, a master was talking to a crowd of people. And his message was so wonderful that everyone felt touched by his words of love. In the crowd, there was a man who had listened to every word the master said. This man was very humble, and he had a great heart. He was so touched by the master's words that he felt the need to invite the master to his home. When the master finished speaking, the man walked through the crowd, looked into the eyes of the master and told him, I know you are busy and everyone wants your attention. I know you hardly have time to even listen to my own words, but my heart is so open and I feel so much love for you that I have the need to invite you to my home. I want to prepare the best meal for you. I don't expect you will accept, but I just had to let you know. The master looked into the man's eyes, and with the most beautiful smile, he said, Prepare everything. I will be there. Then the master walked away. At these words, the joy in the man's heart was strong. He could hardly wait to serve the master and to express his love for him. This would be the most important day of his life. The master was going to be with him. He bought the best food and wine. He found the most beautiful clothes to offer as a gift to the master. Then he ran home to prepare everything to receive the master. He cleaned his entire house, prepared the most wonderful meal, and made the table look beautiful. His heart was full of joy because the master would soon be there. The man was waiting anxiously when someone knocked at the door. Eagerly, he opened the door, but instead of the master, he found an old woman. She looked into his eyes and said, I am starving. Can you give me a piece of bread? The man was a little disappointed because it was not the master. He looked at the woman and said, please come into my house. He sat her in the place he had prepared for the master and gave her the food that he made for the master. But he was anxious and could hardly wait for her to finish eating. The old woman was touched by the generosity of this man. She thanked him and left. The man had barely finished preparing the table for the master again when somebody knocked at the door. This time it was another stranger who had traveled across the desert. The stranger looked into the man's face and said, I am thirsty. Can you give me something to drink? The man was a little disappointed again because it was not the master. He invited the stranger into his home and sat him in the place he had prepared for the master. He served the wine he had intended to give the master. When the stranger left, the man again prepared everything for the master. Someone knocked at the door again when the man opened the door. 
there stood a child. The child looked up at the man and said, I am freezing. Can you give me a blanket to cover my body? The man was a little disappointed because it was not the master. But he looked into the eyes of that child and felt the love in his heart. Quickly, he gathered the clothes he had intended to give the master, and he covered the child with the clothes. The child thanked him and left. The man prepared everything again for the master and then waited until it was very late. When he realized the master was not coming, he was disappointed, but right away he forgave the master. He said to himself, I knew I could not expect the master to come to this humble home. Although he said he would come, something more important must have taken him elsewhere. The master did not come, but at least he told me he would, and that is enough for my heart to be happy. Slowly, he put the food away, he put the wine away, and he went to bed. That night, he dreamed the master came to his home. The man was happy to see him, but he didn't know that he was dreaming. Master, you came, you kept your word. The master replied, yes. I am here, but I was here before. I was hungry, and you fulfilled my need for food. I was thirsty, and you gave me wine. I was cold, and you covered me with clothes. Whatever you do for others, you do for me. The man woke up and his heart was filled with happiness because he understood what the master had taught him. The master loved him so much that he had sent three people to give him the greatest lesson. The master lives within everyone. When you give food to the one who is starving, when you give water to the one who is thirsty, when you cover the one who is cold, you give your love to the master. So the man in this story is a perfect example of the blossoming lotus. Each person that showed up at his door asked him for the very special item that he intended for someone else. He could have looked at that like the mud and the muck but he invited it in. He knew he could show them appreciation for their situation. He knew they would appreciate his attention to their basic need in that moment. He appreciated, and the master appreciated him.
front of me is heaven everywhere in every place and everything in front of me is a me pleasure, every pain, every joy, and every heartache. 